Right, it's time for part three of the Learn React for Free on Scrum course. Building a, uh, a meme generator in, uh, in this module. So I'm looking forward to this because it's going to be the most dynamic in terms of an app in that we're not using any hard-coded data. And we're really going to get into the, the, the guts of why React's good. So without further ado, um, I've done a quick preview of the first three lessons. Um, I'm probably going to skip the CSS bits because um, there's nothing reacty in there, so I'm going to let Bob do that. But we'll, we'll watch the first lesson and then we'll tackle the, the first two React challenges. Or I will. Or I'll try to anyway. Right, here we go. Let's get going. Switch to that. Like that. Hit it, Bob. You have done an amazing job so far, and now we have arrived at probably the most exciting section in this whole course, and that is how we can create interactive web apps in React. Until now, we have basically just been recreating static websites in React. And of course, along the way, we've also learned how we can use props to create reusable components in React, but really so far that's only allowed us to create reusable parts of what is still considered a static website. If you think of the Airbnb Experiences clone that we just finished building, we left it off in a state that really still didn't allow for any kind of interactivity with the user. On the real Airbnb website, a user can click into those experiences, they can save them to their favorites, and then of course they can actually book that experience and pay for it. So that lets us know that there is so much more that we get to do with React. And that's where you've arrived in this section. To help us better understand what I'm talking about, let's take a look at the difference between static websites and dynamic web apps. The static web pages that we've been doing so far, they're really read only. They don't allow for any kind of changes to the data. And that's probably the defining attribute of a static web page, especially in the early days of the web, but still pretty common today, you'll find static web pages like a blog, a news site, recipe sites, and a bunch of others that really don't allow you to change any data, but rather just to read or consume the content that exists on the page. In this section, we are going to be learning how we can use React to also create dynamic web applications. And the defining attributes of these web applications is that they are both read and write. In other words, the user has the ability to change the data that drives the app. As such, they tend to be highly interactive. And instead of displaying the same content for every user, they will display your specific data. And these kinds of web apps drive entire businesses. If you think of, for example, your bank website or the real version of Airbnb. And this list goes on and on if you think of social media websites or online games or anything that is highly interactive and displays data that's specific to you as the user. You could say they all exist on a tier sort of above a static website because of the amount of interactivity they have. Of course, we're not quite ready to recreate an entire site like Airbnb, so we'll be using this meme generator project to drive forward the curriculum in this section. In this project, when the app first loads, it's going to reach out to an API and get 100 of the most popular meme images at that time and give the user the ability to enter the text that shows up on top, the text that shows up on bottom, and also to click a button to randomly choose a new meme image. Just like before, you can click the screenshot here to go to the Figma design file. And again, I recommend you copy it to your drafts. So if you click the arrow at the top, duplicate to your drafts, and choose this option, it will put an editable copy in your own Figma drafts that you can use as reference. In order to build this project, we're going to be learning about event listeners and how we can add that dynamic interactive aspect to our web application. We're gonna spend a lot of time learning about something called state. We'll officially cover conditional rendering, which you've already had a few sneak peeks at so far. We'll talk about forms and how we can gather data from the user, and we'll learn about side effects and how we can manage side effects in React. Once again, we'll be starting off by building some of the static components of our page here. So if you already feel like you're 100% good on CSS in React, you can skip the first couple lessons where we're mostly just doing some setup and styling for this app. However, I do encourage you once again, if you haven't been practicing your CSS inside of your React, or honestly, even if you're feeling a little bit hesitant on CSS in general, not specific to React, then don't skip those screencasts. Go through those lessons, do the challenges, and that will be a great way to get some additional practice on those topics and set you up for success with the rest of this project. So click the screenshot to open it in Figma, copy it to your drafts, and when you're ready, let's get started on this section, which I'm the most excited about in this whole course. You don't mix it. Yeah, and I'm excited too, Bob. I'm looking forward to this section. So as Bob mentioned there, there's going to be the next two lessons, uh, which are meme generator header, meme generator form, are both <coughs> heavily CSS based, but 
they uh, they are still practicing creating React components. I'm going to do them. So if you look at the screen now, I have um, taken a copy of the Figma design like Bob suggested. But what I've done, I've, um, in my mind, I've sliced up how the HTML structure is going to look for this uh, small app. So I've taken it from top to bottom. Uh, the header Ella is good. Um, header Ella. Mariana. Um, that's going to be a header element. And within that header element, you can see I've drawn these green boxes. That's going to be a div. That's going to be a div. Um, I'm going to create, um, I'm going to make the header a flex element. And these are going to be flex items that you can justify content left and right and a space around, I think it is, space between. So that's how I'm going to split that. This, I'm going to have an image there and a, a H1 there. Do that. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> That's what I meant to do. No, oh, I'll just use copy and paste. Right. So this is kind of the way I will approach slicing up and structuring uh, a Figma file or any doesn't have to be Figma. Um, any image mock-up of an app or a website. I'll draw boxes where I'm going to write, create divs. So it's going to be a header. So we're going to fill a bit of a stroke there. And there too, you can see it. So the black one's a header. I'm going to make it a um, display flex. Two divs there. Within this div, probably call it title. Um, there's going to be an image and a H1. Probably make that a H2. Um, the app itself, the pro actually, the whole app's going to need its own container. That's the main wrapper. I might put a main in there. Header. It's going to be a. I might create this as a section. I'm probably doing this a bit more professionally in a professional environment. I might mark up the names of these divs, but I'm not going to. That'll be a. Oh, you get the idea. The white bit's going to be a section anyway. Probably done with the green one. Yeah, the green one's the main section wrap for that bit. Just bring that out. There we go. And within there, I'm going to have two more divs. One there and one there. Just display blocks and they can just sit down on top of each other. Um, within there, I'll probably create this as a grid. Um, two column grid. Column one, column two, and I'll have that span in both columns. And then we'll drop the image in that placeholder. Right, so that's that's how I'm going to structure this app. So let's get Bob back up. I think it's the header, yeah. Sometimes if I'm feeling overwhelmed by a project like the meme generator here, where we haven't learned some of the things we need to know in order to complete it, I will break the app down as much as I can into pieces and then see which of those pieces I actually can which is what I've just kind of done. And create. For example, we've spent this entire course so far learning how to build static React sites. And the truth is there are static parts of this site. So the first one we're gonna start with is the header. Remember, you can click this screenshot in order to go to the Figma design, which you can use to determine the font sizes, the spacing, this cool purple gradient here, and so forth. So let's start out with that, pause the screencast and work on building the header component. Right, so what I'm gonna do here 
is I'm just going to build the React element of this component. And then I'm just going to fast forward it, make sure I'll get that working. And then we're going to take his styles because I don't want to be writing CSS. I'm brilliant at that anyway. Right, let's get on with the React then. Scrimba. Okay. That's what we're building. Make it smaller. Right. Yeah. Right, so we need a header there. He's got hello world at the moment. So let's create the header component first. In fact, he hasn't got a folder for it, has he? So let's do I'm calling it comps because I'm lazy. And then uh, we need a new file called header.js. That's going to be the header component. And there it goes. So we're going to need in each component, we need this to import the React library. And to make this component accessible by another component I imported, you always have to put this export default in front of the function declaration. So let's call this function header. Returning this. So we're just going to return that hard-coded version of that header. As you can see from that, that's how I'm going to structure it. So there's going to be a header. I'm really big. Right. So let's create a header. Remembering that you should always have a parent in a React component. I'll sort of complain. Right, that's our header. So we're still going to have two divs in there, didn't we? Which can be this be the left, this be the right. Do it without looking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So in there we've got an image. It's annoying it doesn't auto complete. Look. I might switch it to you. Might move into VS Code, just build it in there. Much quicker. Um, right, okay, what's the image called? Full size.js. That's cringy. Full size.js. Meme generator. Okay, so that'll be that's the name of the app. So let's give that H1. I think that's all we need there. Bit what we got. Okay, uh, wrap course project three. Why is it called that? Bit weird. Okay, let's call it H two then. H two.
So I think my little background sounds going again. Yeah, why not? Yeah, that right, this won't run now. It definitely don't want, pardon me, it definitely won't run if you mix H2s with H3s, like I just did. Right, let's give this a class, last name isn't it, wrapped. Typing faster than my brain's working. <laughs> Col. Alright, Col. I know someone called Col. I said, alright, Col, when I saw him at the weekend. Right. That's the component done. Let's get it working in the app. So, to do that, I need to import it. So, import header from the location which is still won't work so it's not been called as we said this is the main app app.js it's kind of the I don't know the home the parent if you want to call it that. So that's that. Let's create a main. So that purple div there, that'll be a main. So that's kind of the whole wrapper. So you sometimes see div class wrapper in the work in the wild. But I like to I like to mix it up a bit. Use more semantics. It's the main sort of giving the con. So I don't know, it's just cleaner to see main without div class wrapper or div class container. Especially when it's the top level element. Right, that's that. So I'm within there. We've only currently got a header, haven't we? So we're going to call a header component. And it ain't going to work. Oh, right, yeah, that closed it. Right. Should see it appearing. Yeah. Travel blog? What about? What the hell? <laughs> what the fuck? What is going on? That components header doesn't even exist. Uh, Scrim, I think we found ourselves a bug there. Comps, I call it, didn't I? How bizarre is that? If you look on the list there. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm looking at one screen and OBS is... <laughs> right, well... <laughs> what, hap what happened there? All right, watch this. Components. Run it. Picking up my travel blog. From where? The components there doesn't exist. How queer. Anyway. Let's change it back to comps. Alright, meme generator, right, it's worked, the header. I suppose I may as well. I know I said I wouldn't. Might as well just put the, get it so it's all in a line, I suppose. On the, you know, let's do the header. Obviously, you'd be more specific if this was a real life app. Let's give it a BG of purple. Close enough in it. That one's white. Display flex. You should watch it. 
lights. When I set this to display flex, it'll go left. See that it's done it there. That's fine. use SAS. <laughs> so lame not being able to use SAS. Sort of 50, right, yeah. And the lap call within the header. Normally this would all be nested. That needs to be flex item as well. Flex box. As you can see there, let's put them from left to right. See? I want a bit of a margin in there, actually. Close that. Just need more between. How do we get? It's annoying that you can't have this kind of there. Code at the same time. What does that do? Preview. Anyway. No, that needs to be set to uh, just find content. Ugh. Make it space around. I sometimes get these mixed up. Make it space between. Make it space between. Oh, in fact, no. I'm sure I used to be able to just drag this. Grab its corners there. Space between, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so I'm not going to get anal with it. Let Bob do that. But you get the idea. So that's the header component done. Um, let's, let's just flick back and quickly see how Bob does it. Might fast forward through. Well, first I'll get the pieces into place. I'm going to create a separate components folder, although this app is probably small enough that it's not really necessary. I'll just do it for practice sake. I'll create a header.js file inside of my components folder, and I'll just spin up a basic React component here. I'll do that little sanity check that I like to do just to see that it's working on the page. In my app.js, I will import my header. Let's put everything here in a div since I know that I'll have multiple things here. OK, my header component is showing up. Next, let's get the content on the screen. I know it's not just an H1, so I think I'll surround this whole thing with a header element. And I probably will image overflow a bit. We'll fix the image in just about six pixels. Seems. And I can push my React Course Project 3 all the way to the right by giving my title a margin right of auto. Margin right of it's just writing CSS there, so let's watch it build. Let's see. Right, let's move on to the next lesson, which is um, creating the form. next piece of our project that we can bite off is the form that we have right here with the two inputs and the button. So that's your challenge for this screencast. Don't worry at all about creating any functionality for it. I've outlined exactly the steps that I want you to do here. We're going to create a component called meme. Inside that meme component, we'll render a styled form, which will have our two inputs and our button. Pause the screencast and work on this challenge. So he says he wants a component called meme. So I guess, well that's the meme, isn't it? But he's just said he wants. So maybe that's the meme form. I don't know. Um, tell you what then, let's just create this green div there. Call that meme, that could be the meme component and then we'll put meme header, just in case. We'll have to see what happens further down the line. That's the plan. Right. Let's get back to the scrim screen. Right, so we've got our header there. See, I wasn't going mad. Look, I knew you could do this. But can you see what I'm building then? Another book. Scrimbers. <laughs> right, so create a meme component. Components. Let's go in the components folder. Of course, you can't duplicate. 
course you can't. Right. New file. Name. Dot JS. Where's it gone? It's the bald man running outside. And there. So I'm just cut I've just cut and paste all the structure from the previous component, so I don't have to type it all the time. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. All this meme. I might just copy what Bob did before for his sanity check, I think he called it. Meme here. Let's bring that into the main app. Call it there. And then port it here. What? Spelled wrong. Right, name here. So we know that works. So given the fact we have to put everything in the parent, I will be doing that anyway. So that's what the markup will dictate. Let's give it a class actually of meme. It's name. So the first thing we want is the yellow box, the first yellow box in the design, which is that one. So that's going to be the container that holds these three. These three. Oh. oh. These three elements. Uh, so what should we call that? Mm. The div. Controls. Mm, controls. Bem. So in there, we want an input. Type. Let's add text. But we want two of them. button when you're used to working with autocomplete everything else is a pain right what's the bit button get a new meme image Okay, not the prettiest, but working. Right, let's quickly sort this layout out a bit. So meme, so that's going to be the big wrapper around the meme section. So if you look at the borders, that looks like it's got the green box there is my meme section element. So it looks like it's got a padding of about, I don't know, 30, 30 pixels. So let's do that. A little trick I always do when building. So I'll put a box around everything. So I know what I'm doing. So if you see there, okay. So within there, so 
better if that actually pulls up the entire view report. Or is that happening because I just let the content make it expand. Right. Yeah. Right. Again, I want to put a hard coded value in. I'm just setting it. I just want it out of the way just to show what's going on. Old habits die hard, go into the index file. Right, meme controls, that's what we're after. So we need to turn this into a grid. You see on the uh, Figma design there, we want those inputs side by side in the menu across the bottom. So to do that, we take in that, put it in here. Giving it a display grid. Come in and then display a grid template columns. Um, that's as easy as the height. Let's move this a bit further. Let's put a gap. Of is it 20 pixels? Now we want that button to span one, two, three column lines. So that column one here. Did I actually see someone do this other method of doing spanning? It took in a value. That you didn't have to kind of hard code, and that if you do add new grid items, it always spun the cock. I can't remember what it was, but it impressed me. I need to look at that again in the future. Right, okay, so that's that's getting there, isn't it? Shut up and take my money. So that's not what we're putting in. Has typed in. So I guess you want some sort of prompt in there. So let's give. Let's use the placeholder. Property. Attribute, or you want to call it. Um, quote. One. Best looking form in the world, but don't care at the moment. Shall I make that button purple? Put a bit of padding in, or go on then. I did say I wasn't going to do this, but. CD gremlin in me will not me allow me to <laughs> ship that. Right, why is that not padded the uh, the inputs? So I've put input. There we go. Let's let's put that on the button as well. Platoon. Gameplay. 
Stop writing all the CS. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, right. Definitely the last thing I'm doing. Right, the layout's there, isn't it? That's all he's asked us to do for this bit. He can do the rest. I'm just going to fast forward through it all. Up one column. Oh, we missed the Need image. to change the... Yeah, the image wasn't there. On the, um, on the button. It's like my buttons to have a cursor of pointer. And awesome, that's looking great. It looks very much like our design. Now, at this point, I probably could separately create this image with the text sitting on top, but I think it's high time that we jump into actually understanding what it is we need to learn in order to do the functional parts of this application, including clicking the button and typing in our text. So in the next cast, we'll talk about what that will actually take. Finally, getting into some React Dev. Right, let's see what's, what's what we've got coming up next. It's the um, Meandle. Project analysis, what? Listening for an event on, gets website from a web application is the ability for the user to interact with what they see on the screen. By now, you should have built plenty of JavaScript applications that used events and event listeners Hang on a minute. We've missed one out, haven't we? Object analysis. The primary thing that sets apart a static website like we've been building so far with web applications is the ability for the user to actually interact with our page. And in order for a user to interact with our page, we have to be listening for different events on that page and then reacting when those events happen. Let's get a quick overview as to how this app will work. As soon as the app loads for the very first time, it's immediately going to make a call to an API called ImageFlip which will return to us an array of 100 meme images that are the most popular at that time. Then, clicking the Get a New Meme Image button will simply randomly choose one of those 100 images in the array that got returned to us. And as you've probably figured out, typing into the left input box will give us our top text, and typing into the right input box will give us our bottom text. Now, there's a lot in there that we need to break down before it becomes overwhelming. So let's start off really easy. The first thing we'll do is learn how to add an event listener to our button so that we can run some kind of logic when the button's clicked. And we'll start that in the next lesson. I like easy Bob. And I know event listeners because I've done it on JavaScript. Let's hope it's similar. Let's slow the uh, lesson down. Yeah. We can learn a new concept. I'm going to fast forward it because it was so so. The primary thing that separates a static website from a web app. He sounds pissed, doesn't he, when he's speaking slowly? Application is the ability for the user to interact with what they see on the screen. By now, you should have built plenty of JavaScript applications that used events and event listeners to allow the user to interact with your application. So this topic shouldn't really be new to you. You should already be familiar probably with two different ways that in a vanilla JavaScript application, you can add events to your program. First of all, there's the dot add event listener, which you probably are already familiar with. If you were adding a click event, you would then provide a function. And inside this function, you put the code of whatever should happen when the element that you're listening for an event on gets clicked. Alternatively, there's a way in HTML where you would essentially put on click and set that equal to the name of a function followed by parentheses. This second way is going to be much more similar to how we actually accomplish adding event listeners to items in React. For example, let's start with our button here. We're going to make it so that when we click the button, something will log to the console. In React, all I need to do is on my button, add an on click. And you'll notice that I used a capital C. And that's because we are accessing the DOM properties of the object that's being created here. As a reminder, what React is doing is it's taking this JSX element that it sees, which in the end returns a plain JavaScript object describing the DOM element that should be created by React. And whatever properties or attributes we add here inside the JSX are directly accessing the equivalent properties in JavaScript. If I were to select this button in JavaScript using document.getElementById or something like that, I would have a DOM element that has a property called onClick with a capital C. And this camel casing is the standard throughout all of our JavaScript elements. So all that means is that instead of using the lowercase c like you might be used to doing in HTML, we're going to have camel cased properties everywhere. So on click, maybe on mouse over, or on mouse enter, and so forth. Let me put this back to on click and we'll see the other difference here. 
Now, instead of setting this equal to a string, which has a function name, because I'm here in JavaScript, I can actually just use a set of curly braces and then put a function directly here inside of my onClick. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of stuffing my functions inside of my markup here if I can avoid it. So what I usually do is above my return, but still inside my component, I'll define another function up here and say handle click maybe, because this is the click event handler. Then I can say console log, I was clicked. Let me get rid of this and I'm gonna give you a mini challenge. Okay, pause the screencast and make it so that clicking the button will run our handle click function. Bit of a curveball, wasn't it? I'll have to rewatch that bit again. Really entirely sink in. It's weird that you used to see it in JavaScript to teach you to not inline your function calls. Right, anyway, let's solve this challenge. Add our new function to the button uh, on click. Handle click. Oh, that was here. No, what am I doing? Cool. <sighs> so when that's clicked, it'll fire that function there. Log click. Is that right? Let's read that. Is it that easy? Must be. It's worked. On click method calling that function. That's the click handler and logging to the console. Yeah, that looks fine to me. A few of you may have been tricked into thinking that you can put handle click with a set of parentheses. And well, let me refresh and see what happens. Notice that as soon as I ran this code, it ran my handle click function. I don't want this set of parentheses here because that will run this function as soon as the program reads this line of code. Instead, I'm passing the function as a value so that React can add that function as the event handler in case a click ever happens on this button. So without the parentheses there, I can hit refresh, I'll clean this up. Hang on a minute, how did that run though when it wasn't even clicked? I probably need to rewatch that, I didn't get it. I can hit click me and then that's when our click event handler runs. The React documentation has a full list of all of the events that it supports. I've included here a screenshot that you can click from the React document. Oops. <laughs> this will take you specifically to the mouse events. I've personally found that mouse events probably make up a good 95% of the events that I listen for in any program I write. Okay. And you'll probably need to use this as a guide for the challenge that we will do right now. Okay. Your challenge that. is to log something to the console whenever the mouse hovers over the image. I added some CSS to darken the image just so it was a little more obvious when the mouse was actually hovering over the image. Again, feel free to use this as your reference. Pause the screencast and work on this challenge. Log something to the console when the mouse hovers over. Okay, so we're not using on click, are we? We're using. Screen's a bit bigger. Uh, on mouse over, I guess. Synthetic event. Map platforms part of the Vax event system. 
Okay, so just reading this quickly. So we don't use browser events anymore. This reference card documents the synthetic event wrapper that forms part of a React event system. Okay. Right, let's solve this challenge. On, I'll read that in a minute. Just know what, where's it gone? I've lost my place now. <laughs> um, mouse events, right, on mouse over. That's the event. That's the handler. That's what I do. Log something to console. Uh, that should work, I think. Run it. I'm just pressing Control S there. If you're wondering. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Idiot. I've put it on the bottom. I've put it on the wrong place, haven't I? Let's just get that on. On the mouse over. Controls, let's use handle click, copy it. Yep, there we go. Let's get console arm up. Bonk, bonk. Cool, then my first reactive ant. Let's check who's doing the right thing. There's a couple different events that should work just fine for this challenge. We have on mouse enter, which will run anytime the mouse enters an item that we're listening for an event on. And there's also on mouse over, which essentially does the same thing. It just has a slight difference dealing with children elements. Right now we don't have any children elements of our image, so it really wouldn't matter which one we use. First, let me create a function that will run when we are hovering over the image. Maybe I'll say handle on mouse over and we'll console log mouse over. And then I can simply add to my image. Let's put it after the source. We'll say on mouse over equals and then curly braces because I'm going to put the name of our handle mouse over function. Pull these onto separate lines to make sure that we can see them well. Hit save. And now when I hover over the image, or rather when there's a mouse over event on the image, it runs our JavaScript code and we get that console log displaying down there. Feel free to poke around the documentation. Event listeners can be kind of fun, especially when there's a bunch that you may not have heard of, just seeing how they work can be a fun thing to play with. Understanding this is going to be assumed from here on because you already should be a little bit familiar with events and event listeners at this point. Fortunately, doing it in React is actually fairly straightforward. And now this sets us up for one of the coolest parts of React and we're going to jump into that next. I like the way he's. I never thought. Of, I've never thought of doing that. Moving the properties over two lines on a, an HTML element. But yeah, the rather than creating my own, which is what he did there, I just nicked that one and used it again. All right. Okay. That was uh, that was a good lesson. I might just pause here and go and have a quick look through the um, those MDM docs that he that he showed us. So there won't be a pause in this video anyway. Let's get me on. There won't be a pause. It'll be seamless. It'll be a seamless transition. All right, later's.